that adds 115 pounds. Okay, here we go. That's the minimum of what I need. So the minimum. Hello and welcome back to the channel. I've only got two days left with the Indian motorcycle vintage dark horse. So today will be my final thoughts and I've made sure to actually get all of my negatives in one place because even though I love this bike, I still want to make sure it's as impartial as possible. And we'll start with a negative. It's a big cruiser bike, really a big chunk of the enjoyment of this bike is having a pillion seat and riding two up. And of course, that's an optional extra. <sighs> So you spend 21,400 pounds and you still have to pay a lot extra to get the pillion seat. So the real price isn't 21,400 pounds and I will show you what a bike looks like spec as I would spec it. Okay, here we go. Base price, 21,395. Now Indian Motorcycle, they know. They know that most people are going to have to get a pillion seat and that is probably why they sell it as a single seater like that because they're immediately, immediately, is a minimum of 500 pounds extra you're going to have to pay in reality so you go to seats 900 pounds for seat 900 pounds 1135 pounds let's go with i mean i want a comfortable seat so heated seat heated seat oh don't know if I need a heated seat. I tell you what, I'll go for a cheap version, the cheapest one. That's £475 for that seat. So that adds that seat on. That looks great. And I will probably, in reality, need... I'm going to need a backrest. I have to have a backrest on there as well. So let's put a backrest on here. That's under passenger. And you're looking at... You're looking at £815. Okay, here we go. That's the minimum of what I need. So the price now is £22,685. To be fair, it comes with the panniers as they are, but there you go. That's the price, £22,685. But it's not just the cost of the bike, because on top of this cost here, I found something quite interesting. So for the big Indian motorcycles, the Chiefs, the Vintages, the Springfields, Chieftains, etc., etc., the oil changes are every 5,000 miles. However, if you buy a Scout or an FTR, the oil changes are every 10,000 miles, and that comes straight from Indian Motorcycles' official website, and I'm sure that's indicative of increased service costs in general for owning one of these massive Indian motorcycles. And then of course, there's what I can buy for the exact same cost as this stunning vintage dark horse. Have a look at this because sometimes it's hard putting into or comparing if you live in different countries, like what's the real cost of this bike. So in the UK, I can go out and buy a brand new 2021 Triumph Street Scrambler for £9,300. But not only that, I can then walk across to the Hyundai dealership and buy a brand new Hyundai i10 for £13,000. All of that for £300 less than the cost of the vintage dark horse. And the next thing you've got to bear in mind when considering one of these beasts of a bike is the insurance because it's £1,600. I couldn't find the exact model for some reason on Compare the Market, but £1,600 for a 2021 Indian Chief Vintage. And if you want a brand new, purely doing this for sake of argument, a brand new Triumph Bonneville, the cost to insure it, £538. So I hope that's been kind of eye-opening because I did have a few people messaging me to say it's not just about the cost of buying the bike and that is actually a really good point it's everything that goes with it because these big bikes they are not going to be cheap to insure or run in general actually the second problem comes from physically locking the bike because both front and rear wheel have the massive fenders that cover over 60 percent of each wheel and on the back you've got the exhaust so if you try and lock put a lock through the back wheel you get 
usually burnt by the exhaust. And if you try and lock the front wheel in a tight spot like this, when you're trying to get the lock through, your head usually gets burnt by the engine itself. So it's messy and it's, it's not the easiest locking this thing. Usually it's very simple with the Bonneville. Rear wheel here, just put a lock through, but for the big dark horse, you actually have to lie down, get under the bike, and then, there we go, that's done. <laughs> Easy. The next problem is the physical size because this is fine in the USA, but in Europe, if you come around side by side, it's not, it's not a million miles off the same length as the Fiat. And I maybe stupidly rode into London yesterday to meet some friends. I had to go to three different parking bays to actually physically be able to fit this bike in. And even when you park it up, in the UK, the way it is, you've got a curb, the, the road slopes down, then you've got a curb, and the exhaust actually scrapes on the back, but you have to push it right back to the very end to even hope to fit it. So this in London, a little bit stressful. You could say it's stupid even considering taking it into London, and I get that 100%, but it is massive. Looks wise, this dark horse is probably the most polarizing bike that I've had on test. For a lot of people, it's the most beautiful bike they've ever seen, including myself. But there are a good chunk of people that just can't get on with the looks at all. With the tassels, big front fender, just the look of the bike in general, it's just too extreme. And while I love the looks, I find it interesting that on the Scout Bobber, there was one fairly big afterthought that I felt on the bike, and that was there was a front radiator guard and it was plastic, it was ill-fitting, it was low quality and I was just surprised that you had such a kind of afterthought feel bit on such a premium bike. And on the vintage dark horse there are also a few bits that I found exactly the same. The type of things that you don't really see on the Harleys. So there are a few afterthought bits on this bike that I don't think quite fit and I'll show you them now. And we start from here these two screws at the top for me there should be no screws at all it should be completely flush no screws and they should find a way to be without those and then you've got the panel gap here for me that should be completely flush and coming around here i guess this bit is for plugging in the ecu to do fault checks open it up and you probably plug something in there but i would hide it hide it and put this in the middle to tidy it up and on the first day I was coming to, let me flip that, I was coming to fill up with fuel. I'm not a huge fan of styling for styling's sake, so for me, I wasn't a huge fan of that. I just have nothing. Just keep the fuel cap on this side and that's it. Under here, the wiring here for me is is messy. There should be a way to more neatly just hide that wiring so you don't have to see it. I don't see many bikes with wiring exposed like that and I was a little bit surprised. Apart from that I absolutely love it but I found it interesting that this is a bit like the Scout Bobber with just a couple of afterthoughts. So gear for the day, this is an amazing helmet for the summer because it's so light with a really thin padding inside and that makes it really comfortable. That's the AGV X3000 shoe protector, German company. I've got a few bits from them and their throttle snake gloves as well. They just make really cool stealth gear that's classically styled. I really like their stuff. I don't think I've said it in a vlog. I always forget, but my height I'm six foot one and this is a very low seat height so it's a heavy bike but it 
it's meaningless how heavy it is because the seat height's so low. It's very easy, really, to maneuver with such a low seat height. So don't worry about height. If you're kind of five foot six, five, seven, you'll be fine on this. Almost completely forgot to mention I've had a few questions about what's the performance handling and suspension like on the bike it's all top level like if you're looking at getting this bike there's nothing to be worried about with any of that the suspension is perfect it's it's forgiving it's comfortable all day long it's just spot on for the right level of you know going over bumps you don't really feel anything it's just supple it's really really nice the engine is more power than you'd ever need. It's a brilliant, ridiculously strong engine. Uh, brakes, amazing. Handling, way better than you'd ever expect it to be. So everything is on point. So if you're looking at buying this bike, nothing to worry about at all from that, or from any of those respects. sad this is my last ride with the vintage dark horse and with a lot of bikes super naked sports bikes even the modern classics you can sum them up or kind of rate them and assess them with how good the engine the brakes the suspension how dynamic they are but with the cruisers it is all about how they make you feel so with this dark horse yes it's all brilliant the brake suspension engine all amazing but it's the way that it makes you feel that's what these big cruisers are all about and the way that this bike makes me feel is more incredible and more special than any bike i've ever ridden in my life and for me that's just about the biggest compliment that i can give for a bike like this and actually and i really do mean this hand on heart it's now my life goal to be able to to own one of these bikes i really really do want to buy it well i hope you've enjoyed my two weeks with the vintage dark horse if you've liked the video please do give it a like subscribe to the channel i'm back on from well from tomorrow i'm back on the bonneville so i'll get some adventures planned with that and this just feels like a perfect setting sunset behind me monica if you want to pan over as i walk away <laughs> Ha 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 ha!